Hello everyone and welcome to the Flame Workshop. My name is Emma Whitaker. I'm the Creative Industries Research Fellow at the Low Carbon Devon Project and I'm here as Chair to introduce Naomi Wright from Moths in the Flame. And Naomi started her life as a botanist and ecologist and she spent most of her time engaging with people with nature, getting them outdoors for all the well-being benefits. In the last 10 years, she's continued her interest in people's connection with the environment as an artist, and she co-founded Art and Energy CIC three years ago, and has become a member of the collective ever since. So I'm gonna hand over to Naomi now, who's going to talk a little bit about um, the Moss and the Fame project and the opportunity for you to get involved in COP26. Thank you, Naomi. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Moths to a Flame and to an opportunity to make something, your little bit um, for COP26. Um, I hope that you all have, I'm going to be saying this so many times, I hope you have your milk bottle and a pair of scissors and a pen in order to decorate the moth and all write your message to world leaders at COP26. But before we get going on that, I will share the screen for a short presentation to give you the context of the project, how, how it arose and how we're joining in with the whole um, COP agenda, whole climate emergency um, agenda as well. So let me share the screen and we will take it from there, hopefully. It's always interesting when we start off like this. Um, I hope I'll put it back to how it was. Can you see that? Hopefully you can. So I'm, I'm in this odd position at the moment and I'm sure most of you understand this that when you're doing a, a conference lecture like this when it's a system for thousand odd people you can't see who you're talking to and doing a make session with people like that is is quite odd because normally in art and energy we have a few people on zoom and we're all chatting away and uh the act of making actually changes what we're thinking and 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 how we well, it gives us opportunities to talk to each other. So I'm really, really hoping that you're going to uh, chat in the chat box and ask questions. And Emma will come back to me with that. And we can then have a sort of internet based conversation. If there are times of quiet, don't don't worry either. We'll just do some making together and we'll all be in the knowledge that we're together. So maybe to start with then, um, because we're sort of connected, but at the same time unconnected, I'd like to just uh, ask us all to put our feet on the ground uh, if, if we're sitting or uh, imagine being close to the ground, which is of course the surface of the earth, and to feel the earth and imagine the earth through our feet and understand that all of us in this workshop are feeling the same earth, the same planet. And of course, we're probably here because we think sustainability of the earth is important. Um, I like the words beginning with re, so I like repair and restore and renovate and re-enliven. I like those sorts of words to describe what we're hoping to do with the planet and the future. So deep breath, pause, think of the feet and, think, and touching the earth and sharing that with everybody here. Lovely moth that you see there. In fact, I haven't checked. I think it's a tiger moth, garden tiger moth. But it's a beautiful picture, I think. So moths to a flame. Is, is gaining momentum and I will talk about it in a bit more detail, but just for COP26, a big, massive, mass participation artwork that is bringing moths in from 
actually from all over the world from we've got um, people in America and Australia and Norway and Germany and all sorts of people are popping up saying can they join in and of course we we're welcoming them to and this is a reminder that that the core of this project um this workshop is the making the making of a moth and that moth being your mark your statement um, of some sort of hope for the future uh, a gathering of moths is called a whisper and so we used that term the whisper of moths we liked the idea that each one was quietly activist and the whole craft of making it is, is often termed as craftivist the craftivist movement so here i am as part of the art and energy cic there are three key deliverers as you can see um, but we're part of a much wider group of um, art other artists or engineers or electricians or all, all sorts of people that have been working in the field where culture meets energy. And in fact, I think that the two are so entwined that they become one, that all our work in the energy world and the culture world are part of the same thing. And in, in uh, two or three years ago, we started by assessing or thinking about solar cells and renewable energies and and using our skills to think of different ways of presenting um, the energy system that of choice uh, in in the world out there so much of our energies our renewable energies are presented in a very utilitarian way and uh perhaps with a lack of imagination and although we like them being a visible statement that that lack of imagination lack of creativity about an array of rectangular solar panels all the same color and so on has perhaps partly led to um, various people feeling um, aggrieved by their presence and so, and so one of the many things that we want to do is to make renewable energies visible and engage people in the making of them, lessen the way that the technology, well, make the technology in everybody's reach. So this was our first one, Dawn Breaks, uh, made by Chloe Uden, and it's using different colored solar cells We've laser cut them to the shape that we want to, and they're all wired up behind, and, and it produces enough electricity to charge a mobile phone. And then other aspects of our work over the last three years have engaged all sorts of people, uh, different ages with energy, um, water energy, you can see there with the girls, um, some students learning about what solar cells feel like and how you tab them up and how you create an object that does um, bring in the sun's energy, raise electricity. And then we've got pieces of community art. We've got eco reminders. That lampshade in the left hand corner is, is a group of people who are making lampshades of the theme of energy. And every time they switch that light on, they'll be reminded of the discussions we had about energy. And then at the far right hand corner is moths and moths, moth watching. And that, if you like, is the starting point to moths to a flame. And this was another starting point to moths to a flame. It's a shield, a solar shield, and it has small portions of solar cell as the wings of those moths. And we did that with some uh, researchers and professors and students at Exeter University and they um, they were experts in solar cells and solar development and we had wonderful conversations with them about the structure of moth eyes 
and about the way that the they are attracted to light of various wavelengths and all all the aims that they had to improve the technology to reduce our energy use to maximize the efficiency of solar cells. So those two things, the watching moths and this, um, set off and started the project Moths to a Flame. And I'm just going to show you a quick video. It's only a couple of minutes long, but a video of Chloe introducing the Moths to a Flame project. I hope it works. <laughs> Hello, I'm Chloe and I'm from the Art and Energy Collective. We're a group of artists, thinkers, makers, tinkerers who all collaborate to use our skills to respond to the climate emergency. And this year, we're working with our partners, Plymouth Energy Community, to make a massive, mass participation art installation called Moths to a Flame for COP26. Now, COP26 is the United Nations Conference on Climate Change, and it's taking place in the UK this year at Glasgow in November. And we'd really like your help to build this really momentous installation that's going to be installed at Glasgow's Botanic Gardens. We're using the moth as an image to think about our relationship with our energy system, because as you may know, moths are attracted to light, as are humans. And we think that it's a good way of journeying into that conversation about energy. We are inviting you to explore the world of moths first. Have a look at the moths that live in the world around you. There are all sorts of resources online that can help you find out about the moths that you discover. Then we would really like you to help us make some moths. It's very simple. Basically, it's just using a milk bottle, some scissors and a marker pen. Finally, we'd like you to visit our website to record your message, your whisper of hope for the future, something that you'd like to tell world leaders and encourage them to make the changes that they need to make to help us respond to the climate emergency. Now, you can do this on your own, or you can do this with your friends, or you can invite your local school or your local community group to get involved in helping us to build this installation. Thank you so much for your help. Oh, I don't want that. What do I want to do? I want to skip that and skip that. There we are. So 20,000 moths and uh, many thousands of recorded messages is what we're aiming for. and working collaboratively with Plymouth Energy Community at the very beginning was really significant in, in how the project has developed. So they recognise the power of creativity and the role of art in engaging people in behavioural change and in understanding our energy systems. And um, with them, with energy and art being central to this uh, project, we've been successful within a crowdfunder and we've also been successful with the Arts Council to fund uh, this project going forward and up to uh, Glasgow and also visiting community groups along the way. Community energy groups are um, each commissioning a, a an artist and working with their community in their place, interpreting moths to a flame in their way. It'll all come and join together in Glasgow. Um, so why moths? I talked a little bit about us getting excited by moths at the beginning. Um, moths being attracted to light are um, a metaphor in a way for our own relationship. And um, they allow us to consider the way we consider energy differently. Being really, getting really close to nature connects more to 
the energy system that we all rely on in so many ways, the, the significance of the sun, the significance of the energy flow through the landscape. And it opens people's eyes to what the possibilities are to, of renewable energy. And, and lastly, there's a little point there about eco-anxiety. Um, there's lots of research showing that making is really good for somebody's well-being and being creative helps. But we were surprised when we analysed people's feedback from last year's testing out various ways of delivering moths to a flame. More than half of them said that they suffered from eco-anxiety and they knew other people that did. And I, I know you can define it in a number of ways and it was just a casual question, but I think it's another another um, opportunity to, to look at the power of this type of uh, creative action. And so when you go to the website, you you'll you'll get the opportunity to join in different ways and watching moths as a, a first way to to get to close to the animal and to understand its role in the ecosystem and how the uh, climate change has actually affected its distribution as well as all the other elements you know human i don't know insecticides and um, development and reducing hedgerows and all that sort of thing and how also moths of a food chain and you know cuckoos rely on big hairy caterpillars which are um, in hedges oak egg moths for instance and and the decline in the moth has led to in part a decline in cuckoos so so that's one making moths is what we're doing now i promise we will be doing it in a little while Recording your message is also important. You saw that in the video. And then there's a whole load of other ways within this project to, to join. Um, making augmented reality moths using a, a, an app, writing poetry. We have a poetry slam on the 20th of July. And the closing date for poems about moths and or energy is the 2nd of July. And then we're encouraging people to look at the world through an energy lens. So I'm just a little film with me and Jenny rushing about Plymouth to look at different parts of Plymouth and the energy that's there, whether whether it's obvious, you know, whether it's a power station or whether it's a tree or uh, I don't know, whether it's getting hot, rushing up steps, whether it's the lighthouse and so on. Then there's the activity packs we're giving out and there's this big, great, big cooperative solar artwork that we're making with um, people as part of the crowdfunder and um, we're hoping to take these solar artworks up to Glasgow. And then we've got a book that's about the um, a moth called Marnie who, who's in search of the moon and just finds headlights and street lights and so on and wants to find another way to light the night so what do these moths look like when they're all together well they're very various to be honest they're um each moth is made by an individual and uh children from children to elderly people um from all sorts of places and so they're colored we don't mind if they're colored with a permanent pen or they're black and um, white moths or they're uh, they have we like a UV pen uh, to add to the decoration because we're going to be lighting some of the installation with UV we see this as as questioning the the light in the dark um, questioning the unknown all, all sorts of uh, RT reasons, if you like, for us to think about that, but it always relates to our energy system. And uh, then, right, so maybe I'm going to stop this share and I shall come back in a minute to that. Um, so I'm wondering whether any of you have got any sort of comments or questions um 
As, is there anything so far? Because otherwise I shall carry on with the making. Emma. Uh, well, I, I've got a question. I just wonder, when you introduced the solar artworks at the beginning, one of the first works that Chloe and yeah. yourself made, um, whether you could just talk a little bit about that process, because they're such beautiful objects, that yeah. that piece of work, and that would be really interesting to hear a little bit more about that, please. Well, um, we, I remember when we first started handling solar cells, I, I hadn't handled a solar cell before. I didn't realize how much like an eggshell it is, a very, very fine layer of silicon um, or, or sheet of silicon, which has the, the chemicals, I'm trying to remember the chemicals now, bor boron and phosphates, I think, on the surface, which um, get the, the molecules in that get agitated by the sun and, and the electrons then travel from that to the, to the silver, tabbing wires on on the cells so we handled those and we tried all sorts of ways of cutting those into shapes because we were really keen to provide a way of looking at solar power differently and it took us a while to find uh, a, a person who was willing to volunteer his time to, to research and find a laser that would actually cut the solar cell. So he did, and we then were able to develop shapes. Um, the tabbing of them takes a little bit of getting used to as well. The, we, everybody can do it. We've, we've worked with children We've worked with adults with no, they think they have no technical skill. But we uh, tab, tab them up in series. And so 24 pieces of solar cell cut into whatever shape creates a 12 volt um, charge, which if it's, you know, in the sun and it's all, you, I mean, there are ways of storing that then in a charge through battery um, but that that was sort of the process, and and we we created six large pieces between us, like the one you saw, and we also made started making ones using paint, like the moth version of the one that was in the um, display, no, the slideshow, and those those ones. Um, have been made by children. We've got a lot of beautiful painted solar artworks as well that are very accessible to youngsters. And especially through the whole COVID time, we were able to do a lot of that work at a distance. That's amazing. So really, you're you're just limited by your imagination, really. They can be any shapes, they and can any, any objects. Any colour as well. We've ordered um, some different coloured cells, but you, you'd be amazed at what colours are available. I think, I think we want to explore all of that more. I think the moths and cop came along. And we really wanted to do a mass participation way of engaging people with the energy systems. Um, and we have been using more secondhand smaller pieces of broken solar cell as um, in a, I suppose that in itself is more environmentally friendly but we also want to push the boundaries of of how solar arrays are developed um, how solar is used architecturally um, solar in resin so you know there's there's lots of things to research further uh, that's that's a really fascinating area and something that you could imagine that could be everywhere that we need to generate energy and why not do it in a really beautiful way yeah um, yeah and um yes yeah, so, uh, I, I, I won't interrupt anymore i'll let you go with the the, the moth yeah, major no, I'm I'm looking looking question, so, uh, yeah I can, see, I can see a question there that says um thanks for sharing what can i use to make a moth if I don't have plastic milk bottles, we only have reusable glass. Yeah, well, we get that asked that question quite a lot. And it's probably a sign that some people making our making moths are already really interested in recycling and reusing and using 
glass. But we say a couple of things. We say that in there are um, this type of plastic is used for uh, other drinks that you find in um, for sale. So you can you can buy those sorts of bottles. But the most most interesting way of doing it is just putting a little notice to your neighbours or asking at work and uh, recycling, getting that bottle gathering and recycling going um, for a purpose in a, as part of your community. Um, the reason why we chose this particular type of plastic, it's on our website actually answering why we're using plastic at all, is that the installation is going to go into the botanical gardens and into the glass houses, which are um, watered and steamed every few hours. And anything else in there would rot and disappear. I mean, they just get too wet. So, so we're using this and then we will recycle this and bring it back, um, bring it back to Plymouth. It's going to be in the Illuminate Festival at Plymouth at the end of November. And then we'll find a way of eventually mashing it up and creating something else beautiful with it. That's what we'd like to do anyway. So um, there's, there's another question here, Nemi. Um, how many have you made or how many have been made so far? All right. Well, we're aiming for 20,000, as you know. Um, we have a couple of thousand that have been posted to us so far. And we have about 4,000 maybe more, 5,000 um, being made by schools so far. So uh, we're, yeah, and we know that there are, we keep getting these emails from communities all over the UK saying they want to do this. So, and we're, the Arts Council funding has allowed us to put on this the Southwest tour, if you like, of landing at various communities around the Southwest to, encourage them to make moths and do a session with them. The crowdfunder funding has encouraged us to provide a whole load of free climate action activities in Plymouth, which will be happening in the summer. And then and then the UK tour, landing at 10 different places on the way up, those communities as well have yet to make their moths. So there's a lot, a lot coming and we're, we're crossing our fingers but, it, you know, if we get 15,000, it's still more than 100 miles of moths when they're all stringed together. So please, anyone out there who wants to help us string them, we in October, we will be doing a lot of that. Thank you. And, and Carolyn Ballard has asked, um, yes. uh, was she suggesting you could use any translucent white packaging from your recycling box? Is that right, Naomi? Um, well, no. I mean, you can, but in terms of, they all have to be the same type of plastic. And I, I know we've got it on our website and I've forgotten which which one it is. Is it two? You know how there are five or six different types of plastic. So in order for us to recycle the whole lot at the end, we need them to be the same material. So if there are white versions of this, and it's the same type of plastic, then yes, that's fine. But any any old plastic, um, you can make moths on any old plastic, but it might not be part of the big installation. We are, I mean, people are interpreting this how they like. So sometimes we get wire moths through the post and um, people have been knitting moths. And, you know, there are... Uh, groups of people that want to take part but don't necessarily want to make these moths. So we, we're we not encouraging that in the sense that we want 20,000 of these moths. But uh, if that's what people want to do, we're very happy to receive them and we'll take photographs and we'll celebrate the fact that they've been made. And at some point, there may be a place to put them so others can see them. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a really important point about plastics, isn't it? It's about keeping them separate so that they can be recycled because if the yeah. different ones get mixed in together, with, yeah. then it spoils the, the recycling process. So, um, yeah, and I, and I, I don't drink milk myself, and uh, so I have had to 
collect. I'm surrounded by milk bottles and it's because I'm asking my neighbours for them and I'm going around sometimes um, looking at their black bins and taking them out, actually. Should <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Anyway, shall we get on with, um, I'll get on with the next bit. Yes. Let's, um, I'm going to share the screen again, everybody. And this time um, you will see a little video from my colleague, Jenny, about making moss. It's an instructional video. And then after that, we will all make moths together and see how you, you know, see how you get on. But carry on with the questions and um, that all makes it a lot easier. So let me share the screen again and, and hopefully, hopefully there's that and this is Jenny. Here we are. Hi, I'm Jenny from Art and Energy. We're creating a giant art installation called Moths to a Flame, which we're going to take to Glasgow for COP26. Part of that installation are these plastic moths. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make yours. You will need a pair of scissors, a marker pen and a milk bottle. Once you've used up all your milk, just give it a really good rinse out and leave it on the draining board to dry overnight. You can also download and print. Sorry, Jamie, the, the video is not advancing. Could you start it again, please? Thank you. Yeah, of your plastic milk bottle. wonder why that is. Where did it get stuck, Emma? Title screen. All right, well, let's see. Is that moving? No, I think you've got the Hi. image, but the video needs to be. We're creating a giant art installation okay. called Monster. Let's um, let's stop sharing a moment, and let me see everybody. Uh, so that video was getting stuck. Yes. Yeah. Start that separately. Start the video separately. Yeah, I'm just wondering where else I have it in. Um, I'll try it again from the presentation, and then if it doesn't work, people will just have to put up with me making it. And we can still, you know, I'll be sort of showing everybody the same type of thing. So, um, all right, let's let's try again. Sorry, everybody, but you know this is what happens, unfortunately. So, I'm going to, perhaps it's because it was YouTube. Hmm, now you've just got me. That's very odd. Let me just see. All right, so you can now see Jenny and Moss to a Flame, and I'll just see whether, and the link I have with her. Can you see that? Hi, I'm Jenny from Art and Energy. We're creating a giant. I'm sorry, Naomi. We can only see you at the moment. The flame. All right. Well, let's let's stop that then. It is a very well. I I obviously think it's a very nice film. It's obviously a very nice film, but if it's not going to work, I think I think actually I might as well just show you myself, and we will. Um, you can see it on our website at a future, well, when you in your own time, especially if you want to work with groups. And the other thing is with this making the moths is that because it's a very simple and easy thing to do, it is easy to share it with groups. And, and we run a monthly, a monthly Zoom session to encourage people to join in and but also to, to answer questions about what sort of things you might need and the kit uh, the sort of um sort of things people might want to do when in an event so uh, that's good right i'm going to 
I'm going to fold this down here and you can see my milk bottle. I hope you've got your milk bottles there and your pair of scissors. So I am going to, right, okay, I'll just tell you this, this milk bottle, uh, to, to, in order to cut out, if you've got a lot to prepare, if say you've got a, a cups group or something and they're, they're, you, they're perhaps not up to cutting out the whole bottle, you, you take off the, the hard top bit. So the top bit, the handle bit and the bottom, and you're left with a piece of milk bottle that's a bit easier to handle. And you can then cut out your rectangles more easily. But today, because of the time, I'm just going to cut out a rectangle from this. And I hope that those of you that have your stuff with you can do the same. You can, it's quite a noisy thing to do. You're probably hearing that on the on the screen quite well. Um, here, so that's my rectangle of plastic. Now, in a in a milk bottle, you can get this is only an ordinary size, sort of two liter. Was it one liter? Two liters, I think. And you can get three or four or five smallish average size sort of moths but if you use a bigger bottle you can all obviously make one enormous moth we don't we have a template but we don't prescribe um, the size so we don't mind if you make teeny weeny moths or great big moths it's whatever you feel like now the templates that we've got here you can, if you are running an event, you might want to laminate or uh, put it in a folder which you could you could disinfect with COVID in mind and it can be used over and over again. Mine, because it's been here and I've been using it, is looking a bit scrappy now, but it still works because you basically put your piece of plastic on top of the template. Each of these moths are real moths. Uh, going along with this understanding moths as a necessary, well, as a first way in. And um, this is the blood vein. And somewhere here I have a pen, which I did have earlier. Here we are. Here's a pen. And this is a permanent pen. Um, and, you know, you know, Sharpies, this coloured Sharpies would do. But you basically trace through. Now, if you don't want to use any of these, you can imagine your own moth, fold the piece of plastic in half and create any shaped moth you like. You don't have to make it a real moth. And so you, you go over, over the lines. doesn't matter if you're a wobbly person like me. I'm quite wobbly in the way that I draw especially in front of people at a conference thing and and then you basically cut around this moth now all the pieces that are sort of left over are i i recycle those um so i'll give them to the recycle person at home um save them up don't throw them into landfill but it's so uh, this bit, I, I don't know whether you're making at the moment, but I'm sort of hoping some of you are. And if you if you are and you're going to finish your little moth, then it would be lovely if you could post it on somewhere that Emma knows about um, on the events page. So you can post your photos on the discussion board, which is for art and energy. Um, so if you go onto the home screen, you can then see the discussion boards and choose the one for art and energy. And there's a paperclip function, same as you'd attach an image in an email, and you can just upload your photo and then we can have a look at them either now or if you want to do it later, um, it, they can stay there and amass over the conference. Yeah, that'd be that'd be brilliant. It would be nice to see 
some and maybe it is it is a little bit addictive like you know in in spare moments or when i'm at, at meetings i'm making my own here and i have a little heat beside my computer because obviously i need i need to contribute to this 20000 so you you end up you end up with your cut out moth and and actually i have i don't know whether you can see it. I started sort of giving the antennae of the moth a bit of a hairy outline, but you don't have to do that. But the good thing about this sort of plastic that we use is that it's really bendable and it's really easy to make it feel and look a little bit lifelike, like this. And, and then obviously you decorate your moth this was a blood vein. had a, It has a big red line through it, actually. But I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to put dots around mine. You, you um, decorate yours as you wish. You can also write words on them too. You know, you could. Um, I like. I've. I've written light on mine. I mean, you know. It's it's if you produce a great big moth, you could write your whole message to world leaders on it if you wanted. But anyway, I'm doing dots around the outside. Perhaps I'll do a little triangle there. And that is basically your moth. Now, normally when you can when you can sort of see people and you're making your moth, you you do start chatting about chatting about the moths and about the antennae, like like moths with enormous antennae. I don't know whether I've made any here. I'm looking for them. Oh, there's a there's a drawing of one here, but moths with antennae like that, um, like big leaves, hairy leaves. Those are male moths, and the antennae are there are their detection of the pheromone from the female. And you could make those great big things or uh, more delicate ones like in the blood vein. But we we also, when we're making, we might talk about eco-anxiety or we might just talk about something going on at home. Or we might start the whole conversation about what message we might give to people in power in terms of looking at our future. So, Lucy Bottram has, has put a comment in here. She says, it's really lovely project. Thanks for sharing. What can I use to make a moth if I don't have a plastic milk bottle or any um, reason? reusable grass and you've, you've sort of talked about going to neighbours and or bins in your yeah. case <laughs> um, but she's also suggesting that um, it will be a lovely activity to do with her cub group yeah it would and we have got cubs and guides doing it um, in their you know in their group and uh, there's you can buy so here's a uv pen you can add UV marks to your moth. You can get a UV torch and you can then shine the torch onto the moth and then it will glow. So they can write secret messages if they like, Lucy, and you can, you can get a sort of, uh, you can make your own kit up or... or you can get a kit from us, but it will cost um, a cost. <laughs> and but you know that that is totally possible with a cub group. I'm wondering what word to write on the other side. I've written light on the right. Perhaps perhaps I'll put night. Um, doesn't particularly make much sense, but so so there's. There's my decorated moth. It's back to front, this picture, so it's quite interesting. Um, 
and this is you know this is a, a great big one which does have some uv writing on in here um another one so they're they're any any anything is really lovely we we like any decoration shaped moth um it's it's long as it's uh carefully well no as as long as it's sort of representative of the person <laughs> that did it and we we have this fantastic collection of photos now of children who've been making them in schools and um observing the moths first and doing some art drawing and really really using the, their observational skills and producing some nice moths so i don't know with, whether any of you here have made a moth and want to tell us that you've made a moth because actually i i think we've only got seven or eight people here so has anybody done any made one or are you just perhaps here to find out and then we'll make one at home so claire harris has said um she's going to ask her street to join in and yeah. and she said you you've hooked her now there <laughs> she is she's into it and she's also suggesting that you could have a mosa meter so you could see how many are done and to help encourage people. Yeah, that's a really good idea. We we've done a we've done a little gif actually of of a um, couple of oh no of a thousand. We've done that, but it's true. We we need to keep it uh, a bit more accurate and a bit more you know on the way up, and then people might be encouraged. They know that if they send in. 200 that it'll go up by 200 yeah so it's a good idea really good idea and there's there's lots of comments about um encouraging encouraging words so liz wells is saying i love the analogy of moths and another way to light the night thank you for that oh, um, that's nice that's nice as well well um i'm going to i'm not going to try any more videos but i have got two or three more slides just to finish off and then we'll perhaps see whether there are any other questions um, and we can we can move on from there so oh look it's the university saying they can share a link to the videos well that's good we can we can make sure you've got those right so let's do this again then and See, that one didn't work. Be funny. Shall I try it one more time, Emma? Would that be good? Shall yeah, I try good it? Idea. Yeah, good idea, Emma. Just just try it. And then it probably it I think it is something to do with the link being perhaps being YouTube. Is it moving now? No, Alice is suggesting you share the whole screen. We're creating uh, a giant art installation I have, called I Moths am to a Flame, whole screen, which we're going to take to, to Glasgow for COP26. Part of that installation are these plastic moths. Yeah, I'm afraid. Okay, you how to make right, yours. I'm really not doing that ever again. So um, let me try and move on. Oops, wonder how you do that. Sorry, everybody. I'm just going to leave that, see whether... No, what do I do? I make it smaller, I probably. And I go back to my presentation. Look at all those. There we are. Let's just nip forward. So you should you've seen me make them off, and you've probably got bored of us telling you what you need. But on our website, you find an opportunity to leave a message and record your message. But you can leave your message in a number of different ways. You can, there's all the poetry that's been written that we're going to use. There's um, people writing messages, what they would say about uh, the planet and the future, what would make the environment better or for their particular place where they are. Um, or you can record this 
on the computer where you, you basically got something called SpeakPipe where you just press the button and it starts recording and you've got a minute and then it records and then uh, it goes into our queue of, of recordings. And we're hoping to, well, we are going to use those in an audio installation to go with the moths. And we're getting a massive variety. We're getting, um, obviously, the schools, the children are doing that individually. And then we're getting uh, people of all ages uh, joining in with that. So that is our messaging. And this here, I shall put this whole screen again. This this here, you there was, was it Lucy that said she might uh, do it with her cubs? Inv and the street, there was somebody who's going to involve the whole street. So, yes, get, get, yeah, yeah Claire, get, get the whole street involved. That would be brilliant. We're, we're here. Uh, our, our main email is hello at artandenergy.org. And you can let us know and we can help you online. We can give you bits and sell you bits to make your event run well, depending on how many and what for, etc. So very pleased with that. And you can all the all the materials are very cheap and cheerful that we've been using, and that's another reason it's really easy to to join in. And the videos and everything else are all on our website. And then you can a lot of the schools are building their own mini installation so they are having a uv little floodlight they are having a branch or two and all the moths are hung on those along with the artwork that, that the other artwork the children's been doing so that that has really engaged the groups and and the whole school in in its in their different forms so We'd encourage that if you'd like to do that, but otherwise sending them to us by the 7th of October would be, is, is what we're asking. And posting them to Plymouth, the address is, I might put it in your, in the chat later, but it's on our template. So, so that is my talk about art and energy and moths to a flame. And, you can see the significance of all those partners there that we've been um, building up as as the journey of Moth to a Flame has been going. And Plymouth Energy Community at the top there being our key collaborator partner from the beginning. But we're with the 10 communities we're working with across the country, which includes the Glasgow Community Energy um, and what Southeast London Community Energy, WESET, and so on, all sorts of organizations uh, wanting to make moths, but also do their own artwork. Like today, I had an email from someone in Manchester that we're going to be working with. He's going to work with youngsters in Oldham, and they produced an absolutely amazing film about energy and the the way it flows through their place and and it's a bit of a street song as well it's a youth it's from the youth group and they've made it and sung it and done it themselves so that that doing more of that will be brilliant and then let me see so turning our whispers of hope into a roar for change and if you want to if you're really inspired we have a watch moths program this coming Friday which includes moth trapping and watching moths and also the whole combining it with the art and the energy side as well so it's a nice eclectic mix from community energy groups and others um, if you want to come along to that Friday evening at eight o'clock and Saturday morning at eight o'clock in the morning to see the big reveal and you can book your tickets it's free you can book your ticket on moths to a flame dot art stroke events I think Emma's going to put that in the in the chat as well and finally although I haven't got a final 
applied. But finally, you, you, I, I suggested that we were all earthed, if you like, in this sustainable, or in this not sustainable <laughs> earth, but the earth that we live in, that we love, um, and that you've been touching with your feet, standing below your feet, then then maybe uh, ponder that, think about that just for a second. And that is the closing moment of, of my um, presentation, but I shall stop it now and, and see. There's a few more comments for you, Naomi. Um, good, good, good. Let me just, uh, I'll just find Carol, myself. Yeah, there we are. Carolyn Ballard, um, she says she's going to make some with the Creative Southwest, our group of textile artists. Lovely. Uh, but using the milk bottle plastic Great. rather than textiles, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's um, really nice. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. And we've put the address in here, which is where to send them to, which um, the plot in Union Street, Plymouth. So the address is there. Yeah. And the link to the events the, is on, is there Good. to them watching and the stream now. Good. Oh, and Carolyn Ballard is asking, how are you stringing them? Would it help to string them before sending them to you? Oh, that's a good question. But... Probably not at the moment, Carolyn. It, it, it's best to send them loose because we have a stringing experimental day, experimental stringing day in a couple of weeks where we're going to try and work out the best way of doing it. So far, if you do make a little installation, you basically sew, bring, bring the needle up through the plastic and down at the head, so up through the tail, down through the head, up through the tail, down forming a, a string and because the, the needle as long as the needle's not too big the the cotton thread tends to hang on to the moth quite well but when we're stringing together thousands of them we're thinking we might need sewing machines and we might do it in a slightly different way so if you've got an installation planned then just sew as you wish and string them in in garlands, if you like, over the tree branch or something. And then if you are going to send them in, send them in loose so that we don't have to undo what you've done. Um, and and experiment as well. If you if you find a good way, let us know. Because we we're um, we're not dreading the sewing together, but it's going to be an art experience in itself, I think, the whole the whole thing. <laughs> There's a comment from Louise Wigglesworth who says the moth analogy is so lovely. Oh, great. Thank you, Louise. Yeah, they, they've they been a great surprise to us. I mean, I you, you heard that I started out training as a botanist and doing quite a lot of ecological work on nature reserves and so on. And then, then I started working with communities and those sorts of things. But um, I did hold, in the 1980s, I did hold moth nights and things, but I was never really an expert and and somehow working with experts on this project and getting them to sh just talk about the ecology of the moths has been um absolutely brilliant and re-enlivened that in me actually that that interest in these little creatures this this week it happens to be insect week national insect week and uh we're connecting up with them we've got our event promoted via them as well but they have a little hashtag called uh, the little things that run the world and I know that you know it's all a bit corny but but getting people interested and just making them think about these little creatures who are who a lot of people would would dismiss but actually uh, are very effective in their place in our ecosystem as well as relying totally on the energy from the sun to make the plants for their caterpillars. Yeah. And I could I could witter on it quite a lot actually about all that. I, I'm going to say one other story from last year. Um that story was that when I was, you know, with the lockdown, I was going on a walk and I came across a big fat hairy caterpillar, which was an opega moth. 
And I thought it was dead, but it was alive. It formed a pupa. It produced a, a moth, uh, a female moth. And I didn't know that it had to go up a stick to open its wings. And so it was a deformed female moth. And I was mightily aggrieved. And then that moth, um, still with the help of an expert, John Walters, that, that moth in my garden still managed to attract a male and they I caught them mating, they produced lots of eggs, and from those eggs I got I got hundreds of little caterpillars which I put back into the garden. So I you know that that without without this project I wouldn't have been opening my eyes in that way to just understand. And then I found out about cuckoos. I found out a whole lot about caterpillars as well. But anyway, we we have I don't want to overrun my time. We, we've overrun slightly, but it's a lovely story. And and yeah, that noticing noticing things that, that making the moths can, can lead to noticing nature. Yeah. Um, so that's wonderful, Naomi. Thank you very much. Um, there's just one final comment. All the events team who are busy in the background in the office, apparently they're making some. Oh, so, um, <laughs> so you've inspired, inspired many people today. And... Um, I'd, I have to now just give a final pitch for, well, obviously for to join Naomi, to, to make the moths and to go to the moth events and all of the things, the, the links are there. And we have got a discussion board where you can post your photos um, during the conference at any point and, and any comments for Naomi, you could put there as well or contact Naomi via the speaker link or her email. But um, what's happening next is we've got a short break and then there is the documentary film um, being screened, uh, 8 Billion Angels, which is at um, 4.30. And that's followed by a QA and a with um, Professor Ian Stewart and Professor Jason Hall Spencer from University of Plymouth. So um, I'd like to thank Naomi so much. Um, a wonderful session and um, I wish everyone well. Okay, thank you, Emma. And um, lovely to see you in the future, everybody.